The next fly I had a lot to do with uh, coming into its creation. It's called the Chernobyl ant. It always uh, raises an eyebrow or two. A friend of mine, a guide on the Green River by the name of Emmett Heath, and I actually tied the first one. When we ran out of deer hair, we were tying a fly, a bullet hair deer hair fly called a Madam X. We were using it to imitate a cicada, which was coming into the Green River at that time. Uh, the cicada uh, was a dark fly, and we ran out of the deer hair, and so we used some foam that Emmett had, and one of his guides named it the Chernobyl ant because it was at the same time as the big Chernobyl disaster in Russia. But it launched a whole new era of flies. There's literally hundreds of foam type dry flies and even some flies under the surface with foam. Foam is a natural synthetic material because it does float. It's a little hard to work with and we're going to give you some tips on how to use it. But there are a lot of traditionalists out there that are traditional fly tires that would probably like to uh, send both Emma and I to the bottom uh, of the river for bringing on this uh, foam, which is not a traditional way of tying. But you know what? It works. I've used this fly in every continent. I've caught fish in Africa. I've caught uh, salmon in Alaska. Uh, there's literally not a fish on earth that won't fall to this fly, including uh, carp, believe it or not. There have been a lot of modifications. I can't tie three or four hundred modifications for you, but I can show you some of the more important modifications to the Chernobyl. One of the big things about fishing this fly is making it move because it creates the image of something on the surface alive. So let's get started. One of the most important things is using a thread that's heavy enough uh, to work with the uh, uh, foam. You want at least a good three-aught or six-aught heavy thread. Uh, before you get started. One of my, my favorite threads to use uh, is a 140, oh God, sorry, 140, here it is, a 140 uh, UTC thread. And it seems to be just about, and this is a Wapsi thread, let me hold it up here so you can see it, a uh, UTC thread, or a 3 aught monocord, anything is heavy enough to tie the foam down. Now a lot of it uh, in color depends on uh, what material you're going to use, what color. The hook that we're going to use, we actually have a choice here. It can be a 2312 TMC uh, or a 5262, any uh, 3X long uh, streamer or nymph type hook or stimulator type hook will work. Now it depends on, again on how long you want it to be. And you can tie this fly in a variety of sizes. It's, it's really a big meal, so it's going to be tied you know, anywhere from a 10 to probably a 4, depending on what species you're going after. The, the thing to understand is this foam comes in a whole bunch of different colors. The, the uh, first fly that we tied, we happen to have some uh, black foam, as you can see, closed cell foam. This is actually 4 millimeters, and then we have another, uh, a tan one. We're going to use a black and tan, but I mean, you can go crazy on what, what uh, uh, colors you want to put it in. Now, the modification that I'm going to use, we're going to change the body color so that we can actually put a dubbing on it. Now, what I've got is I've got one uh, black, and it should be approximately uh, about a shank and a half in length. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I like to, uh, to round these out. and. Uh, so that it looks more insect-like. And now we're going to uh, cut the tan. And I'll, I'll just actually cut it for you right here. Now we're going to round this out, just like this. Let me show you how I'm rounding it. Another neat little trick is after you do this, if you want to take a, a match stick, and light the match, and then uh, blow it out, and then you can take the match stick and just kind of round it out and it kind of smooths it out. But I don't think fish look at this and make sure that it's perfectly round. Okay, we're going to put the bottom one in first. We're going to tie it so that it hangs out the back about like that. Now, the first thing when you lay this in, it's going to want to go like that. So what you're going to do is bring a nice little loop, get it in the loop, pull it down, match it right up to the barb there. and then wrap forward. 
and we're going to take some big wraps. And if you tie it out right, it should come out just about like that. Now, in the original Chernobyl, we would tie it down here and here and just use the foam as a uh, body. But what we're going to do is we're going to modify this. We're going to do a modified Chernobyl. And actually, you can kind of do whatever you want on this body. Now, you've got a lot of dubbings that uh, if you're going to do a hopper color, you might want to use yellow. If you want to do a stone fly, we might want to use amber. I'm just going to go reach in here and, and look and see what I might have. I got a nice looking uh, little amber right here. So we'll kind of use this amber. But again, uh, it's kind of up to you. The amber uh, color is a, is a great color. Before we do that, we've got our, our dubbing. We're going to lay that down. And again, it can be any color dubbing you want it to be. But what we are going to do is we're going to lay in uh, a uh, uh, brown saddle. And this is going to help us get a little bit more flotation out of it. So we got a nice brown saddle. And it, it, don't worry about the sizing. Whatever you want it to be, uh, it can be it can be a small size or a large size, doesn't make any difference. What you don't want to do is trim it. And we're going to tie it in just right kind of, again, like we did before. You want to get used to this little maneuver of rolling your thumb in. And we tie in the vein. Notice that I took off some of the uh, fibers from the back part of it. We tied it in. Now, this is going to make this fly very durable the way we tie this. Now, we're going to take some of our dubbing. And again, if you want to, we're going to talk about dubbing techniques a little bit. We're going to add some wax, just like this. Again, uh, the dubbing you have is an, is an Antron blend, so it's going to be nice and sparkly. And we'll add our dubbing color. Now, again, I'm going in one direction like this. You can see. Now, don't get it too long. Because if you get too long, you're going to end up hitting that infamous barb, and, and you're not going to be very happy. OK, we're going to wrap it forward. Again, doing the same kind of dubbing. Now, I actually uh, made it a little thicker than I would normally do on a dry fly, because this is a pretty good number. We're going to just work it up to about this point, about a quarter. That's 3 quarters of the shank. This is the quarter right here. Okay, and now we'll get our hackle plier. I'm just going to go to another hackle plier. We'll just go to the to a regular old style loop hackle plier. And again, on your hackle plier, again, notice where that the glossy side and this, since it's a dry fly, this is a dry fly, is to the back. And we're going to grab it with our plier. And you might say, well, gosh, couldn't I just handle that with my hand? You certainly could. And as you get more proficient. Now, notice there's a little bit of a dark color that's in that brown. Almost all the brown saddles have a little bit of dark color. We call that a furnace marking. And we're going to go right up, nice and even. And we're going to tie it down. Now, if I was going to do a hopper, it would be yellow and use the same brown wrapping. And right now, I'm going to kind of make it into a uh, kind of a stone fly. OK? Tie it. Tying it down just like that. Now we're going to get our black and we're going to lay it so it's right to the back, kind of a sandwich effect. Now, one of the problems that you can do, uh, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can tie this in right here, then tie off your thread, then tie it in the back and restart it. But I think that if, if you use the right teller or thread, what you can do is just wrap right through the body, reinforcing it. And I've got a brown thread, so that's going to match with the dubbing. And we'll just go in the back, lay this down, match it up with the other foam, and tie it in. Just like that. We're going to be putting a wing on this fly. And it's going to help it flow a little better, but a lot of times you may not want the wing. At this point in time, you may want to add an indicator at the back. But before we do that, one of the most effective parts of this fly is the legs. And what we're going to do is we're going to use some black, round, rubber legs. Now, we buy them in big, long strips like this in a bag. And I want you to notice something. See, it's got that little bit of a kind of a hump, uh, uh, bump in it. And that's from being wrapped up in the package. 
what you want to make sure is you don't get that in your leg. So cut it so that you don't have that little uh, memory from the folding over in it. Now I'm going to use four legs. So I've got four round legs I've pulled out. Boom. I've cut them. See right there? See what I'm talking about? See how, right here. Look at that. So we're going to cut that memory out. There we go. Look at that. See, they're nice and straight now. How long should they be? Oh, I like long legs, but you don't want to have them too long. Uh, but you always want to, what I always tell people about, again, use that shank and a half as a gauge. And that should be just about the right length for your legs. Now I'm going to take one of them off and we're going to lay it right on the side. Now watch that point there. We're going to come around, make a loop, and then make sure they kind of go in between like a sandwich. In between that. Let me tilt that up where you can see a little bit better. There we go. That should be just about the right length and you shouldn't have to do too much trimming. Now a rotary vise really helps you on this. Now, I'm going to tilt it over like this where you can do the same thing on the other side. Now these are medium round legs and black ones and those that have the kit know you have the right ones already ready for you. Now I'm going to kind of pull it so it's nice and even there. Now obviously you can make them longer and trim them down. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah, pretty, pretty easy to do. And you know they won't necessarily always go where they're supposed to go. Now you can use yellow foam, you can use orange foam, uh, and you can lay just a tiny piece right up on top for a strike indicator. Now if you weren't going to put on uh, the wing, then you could lay it in like that. We'll, we'll do it anyway. We'll make this the deluxe version. Now all I did was take a little piece of that, just a little, little tiny piece, laid it right in there. You might say, why would you need to see this, something this big? Well, guess what? This is going to lay in the surface film for it just about like that. And you won't be able to see it, believe me, with the glare on the water. And that's one of the reasons I put a wing on this fly. Okay, we're going to go right forward, just like this, right up and stop. Now we're going to pull it tight, put our thumb down. Now there's a couple things we can do right here. We can take and bring this forward right to here and have a double sandwich effect. Cut it right there, just like that. And uh, we could then wrap a little bit of dubbing or not any platform here. In other words, just tie it right about there, put your legs on like this. So essentially we would add the legs right here, put another strike indicator on, and we'd be done with the traditional style Chernobyl ant. But we're going to change that a little bit. I just want you to know what the traditional is, and now we're going to go to the dark side and add a little bit more to this fly.